We're now joined by Elliot Spaziri of Texas Men's Tennis going into the NCAA tournament. This man right here, the Big 12 Men's Tennis Player of the Year. Elliot, when you got that recognition, what did that mean to you? Yeah, it was certainly a good feeling. Uh, it's been a lot of work I've put in the last, you know, year and a half coming back from injury. Uh, but it's, it's just a testament to, to the work the team's put in, the coaches have put in and kind of the trajectory that our program's going. So I, I was happy to get the reward, but we're obviously chasing some bigger things this season. Well, take me back a year and a half ago to the injury that, that you mentioned. What went down and how that affect you? Yeah, so I was coming back from the summer and uh, it was the first week of the fall and I was just drilling some backhands and I, I felt my left wrist uh, get a little sore and didn't think much of it, got some treatment and eventually it just started getting worse and worse. And at some point it was like, okay, we're gonna try a, a cortisone shot. And uh, fast forward a couple months later, the cortisone shots didn't work and there was some issues with the anatomy of my wrist. I had right wrist surgery when I was really young. And so uh, we kind of knew that was the end goal that we we're gonna have to get surgery. It was just a matter of how we're we gonna do it and what time. And so, uh, I just had to go through the season without a left wrist. And so I was slicing backhands. I normally have a two-handed backhand. And then uh, in, in the summer, I ended up having to, to get the surgery and taking the, the full three months off. But it was, uh, it was tough. It was weird to go from sort of the best moment of my career, mm. having a really good summer and wanting to build on that to then kind of like the lowest moment, just uh, not really knowing what's going to happen with the wrist and uh, having some results that maybe weren't as easy to accept. Yeah, and with those results, being a high-level player, I'm sure there's an adjustment there and the mentality of knowing that I'm not 100%, which may be leading to me not being at my best. Why decide to go out there when you weren't 100% instead of getting the surgery then and getting back to being you even quicker? Yeah, it's just, it goes back to how much I love this team. I think the greatest thing that we have going for our team is we're as close as can be. I would argue we're the closest team in the country in any college sport. And I think that's what it comes down to. Coaches like, listen, this is up to you. You don't have to play, but the decision's up to you. And then you just tell me how you feel. And I said, listen, I don't know if I'm good enough to play without a uh, left wrist, but I'm gonna try my best. And if you think I am, put me in and I'm gonna give it my all. And he believed in me and it ended up going a lot better than I thought. So I was happy I was just able to produce for the team. What did you learn through playing in terms of, of your game? What were you able to, to develop? Maybe something new that you added to your game because you had to compensate for not having that backhand. Yeah, you learn how to think through points in a different way. There's a lot of intangible shots that you never would practice if it wasn't for a lack of a backhand. So it's these short slices, it's uh, finding more forehands that you usually would, because when you don't have a backhand, the forehand has to become a weapon. And so it definitely helped me improve my forehand, helped me improve my net skills, my all around game. And so it definitely helped me work on some other parts of my game that I never would have. And it also teaches you how to be a better competitor. So are you better because of that trial, that tribulation, having to come back and work through something like that? Certainly, yeah. It's it's definitely a blessing in disguise. It was it was tough in the moment to believe that. Yeah. My coaches were telling me, listen, this is gonna be a blessing in disguise. Just give yourself six months and you're gonna be in a good place. And you, you just, you grind every day and, and you see where, where it takes you. And it's hard, you kind of tell yourself that, okay, maybe it's coming together, but uh, looking back, it's, it's pretty special to, to see how far I've come since that injury. And then in February, you get that number one spot in the IGA rankings. What did that do for you, for your confidence? Uh, yeah, again, it was just, uh, I'm never shooting for rankings necessarily. Uh, it was nice to be ranked number one as a team uh, and number one as an individual. But again, it was just a testament to the work I've put in. My coach was at home was telling me, you know, it's just a sign that what you're doing is taking you on the right path and it should motivate you more, which it did. And it just definitely makes me want to reach uh, higher goals and do the same with the team. And I know you can read opponents, right? You can read body language. So when you get out there on the court with that number one ranking, what do you see that that does to your opponent? It's funny you say that. I was talking to my coach about it the other day. I think it can go one of two ways. Some Sometimes guys are incredibly loose because uh, they have nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. And sometimes... When they play you? Yeah, and yeah. sometimes there might be a little bit of an intimidation factor uh, where they don't have the belief that they can hang. Because I, I remember this 
for myself three years ago or four years ago when I first came to college and I was playing some of the, the higher ranked guys, even practicing with Yuya Ito, who was, mm -hmm. was a Longhorn legend, I didn't necessarily believe right away that I could hang, but as the match goes on, as you practice more with these guys at that level, you believe. So it's, uh, it's something that I can use to my advantage to know that sometimes I have an edge going into the match before we step on the court. Uh, but, you know, ev everyone's different. Everyone treats those moments differently. You've talked a lot about the mentality of being an athlete. Is that something you've developed on your own? Have you had a, a mental game coach? How have you been able to hone that skill set? Yeah, I credit a lot of this to my coach at home, my private coach, Patrick Hurst. He's ingrained a mentality in me from a really young age uh, of just hard work and resilience and grit. And uh, I also work with a mental coach, Alexis Castori, who is very well known in the tennis world. She works with a lot of top pros. And so she's helped me work through all these little issues you face on the court and even off the court. And she teaches you how to be a better person and kind of how to handle these difficulties in life. And, and all of it translates to the tennis court and off the tennis court very well. But it seems like you've really embraced that. And not every athlete does. I think some athletes get so infatuated with the physical aspect that they're like, okay, I can out physical my opponent. I don't need this mental stuff. Yeah, I understand. I didn't want to understand for a while that I wasn't physically like the most gifted. I okay. wanted to just hit everyone off the court <laughs> when I was young and hit winners and, and hit aces. But I, I realized as I got older, I'm not, you know, the fastest guy. I don't have the biggest serve. I don't have the best hands, but if you can take care of the mental piece, uh, you can jump a lot of your peers. And so I think that's uh, been a big part of my success is just um, trying to become the best competitor I can and, and trying to get 1% better each day and then seeing where that takes me instead of worrying so much about you know how strong am I compared to the guy across the net, how fast am I, who serves bigger. Because if you get too caught up in those things, it can be a, can be a tough day at the office. And from what I understand, you've shared the court with some of the greatest competitors of all time. Roger Federer, Andy Murray, you've been on the court with them? Yeah. How, how, how does that happen? Yeah, I, I was pretty lucky. I got some good opportunities from the USTA. They try to give some of the top U.S. juniors some, some opportunities because those guys come in a couple weeks early for the big Grand Slams and they want some training. And Federer and Murray were both in town and I'm very close by. So they reached out to me and I obviously it was a dream come true. And so uh, I got to share the court with them and it was just, yeah, it was, it couldn't have been a cooler experience. They taught me so much. And uh, they're also just the best dudes. Like it's just crazy how humble they are. And so to be in their presence was uh, something I'll never forget. What do you want to ultimately do in this game? not just here at the University of Texas, but beyond. Yeah, I wanna be, I want to be one of the top tennis players in the world. That's my goal, uh, that's what motivates me. I think it, it's, you don't wanna look at that every day and, and try to shoot to be the best tennis player in the world today. It's about, about producing good day after good day and trying to get 1% better. So uh, my end goal is to be one of the best tennis players in the world and, and make a career and living out of it. So if we asked your twin brother who was the more successful, better athlete, what do you think his response would be? Uh, he certainly would say himself. We have a very competitive, uh, healthy competitive relationship, but uh, he had a great season himself. He was... He's it, at Penn, is that right? Yeah, he's at Penn. He plays squash at Penn, and he was giving me some flack because he finished the regular season undefeated, and I, I lost one match. <laughs> so, uh, so he does have the edge. <laughs> right now, he, he has the edge. He finished, uh, I think, seventh. It's seven or eighth. They didn't play, play it fully out. But he finished seventh, eighth in the country, and he's an All-American. So I'm super proud of him. He's, he's inspiring me, but uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot to beat him out this season. And what's his name? Nicholas. Nicholas. So shout out to Nicholas as well. Best of luck with Nicholas and Elliot going forward. Elliot, thank you so much for Thanks your time. So much, really do appreciate, appreciate it. it.